Welcome back to the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop, and boy, do I have some exciting results to share with you. Stick around till the end, because you don't want to miss any of this. Trust me. Welcome to the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. As many of you know, data drives informed decisions. And oh boy, do I have some data for you today. This is part two of a mini series of video content where I took samples from my GXCS2 and my 88 cubic foot SCBA bottle filled by the Young Hang compressor and directly from the Young Hang I call the wrong way. The first bit of understanding I gathered from this effort is the relative volumetric output of these two compressors. The flow rate of the GXCS2 with 250 watt input energy is approximately five liters a minute at ambient pressure and temperature, or rather not under increasing pressure as it's filling a bottle. This is simply how much air the unit can move without the air pushing back. It gives us a glimpse into how effective each unit is at moving air from one place to another. The Young Hang at 1800 watts input energy is around 23 to 25 liters a minute. The clever viewer will notice this delta closely follows the difference in input energy. One unit lends itself to easy use in the field. The other is better left in the shop or house and used to fill larger capacity bottles. The amazing folks at Trace Analytics have teamed with Target Forge to answer a few pertinent questions. One, is it possible for any of these units to generate breathable air? And two, what am I putting into my really expensive PCP air rifle? I would like to reiterate, Target Forge, Bill Rule, Trace Analytics do not condone or support the use of this equipment for generation of breathable air. These tests are valid only for the moment in time the samples were taken and only valid on these exact units. The actual compressors and bottles in the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. If you intend to use any equipment for the generation of breathable air, test regularly and invest in high quality filtration or use a professional source for your air. That being said, let's look at the output air tests, tests from the GXCS2. First of all, they really do produce high quality air. The moisture is still an issue and we will be addressing that together. But the results actually pass some standards for breathable air. Again, only valid for a single moment in time when the samples were collected. The lawyers in the world make me do this. I tried a coalescing oil and water separator on the GXCS2, and it literally had no effect on the water content of the air. Guys, this next clip you're gonna see is my test of the coalescer on the GXCS2. It is abysmal. I'm going to go really, really fast through it because it's just not worth your time. It failed just the same as if this wasn't even in the air path. Now, what I will also share right after that is what comes out of this compressor through a molecular sieve based media filter. And those results are incredibly dry. The glass tube in this frame is filled with a material that changes color as it gets exposed to moisture. Before I even get the clock started, it's already changing and climbing up that tube indicating the volume of water in that sample. Absolutely insane how much moisture is making it out of that compressor. I know many of you use the same unit on your Young Hangs and your off-brand versions and get decent results. What could be wrong here? Turns out science has the answer. 
In a document called International Journal of Multiphase Flow, I found an entry titled On the Effect of Approach Velocity on the Coalescence of Fluid Particles. I'll warn you, if you're looking for a bit of light reading for the beach this summer or the tree stand this fall, this is not what you're looking for. It does, however, explain the relationship between air velocity and the effectiveness of a coalescing separator. So Eureka, we know why this unit does not work on the GXCS2 and very likely any low output air compressor. Turns out the air velocity is just not enough to get the effect we need to keep that water out of our guns. Also, these will never get your air super dry either, even on the Young Hang. At best, you might see 80 to 90 percent of that, and that's typically in a design optimized for a given flow rate. Grabbing the lowest cost unit off Amazon or AliExpress may yield much lower performance. Note that I didn't say poor performance. I think one of these coalescers on a Young Hang or similar 1000 watt or larger compressor could really work well at diverting a great deal of moisture and oil from your molecular sieve desiccant filter, giving you much better life out of that expensive media. Currently, I have been unable to find a coalescing separator sold for low flow portable compressors. Some small compressors come fitted with them from the factory and the CS3 is one of them. For the CS2, we need a different solution. I'm thinking a vertical branded gold filter charged with quality molecular sieve desiccant may be a valid off the, off the shelf solution. Why branded? Quality seems to follow those willing to put their name on the product, usually. Tuxing is what I'm using right now, both on the Young Hang and the CS2 and I have links in the description. Remember, we are an Amazon affiliate, so do check out our links below. One other note on the GXCS2. Given its low flow rate and lack of active cooling, it's a silly choice for breathable air. Despite being able to make reasonably clean air, getting enough air to make getting wet worthwhile is just not in the cards for this range of unit. Fill an air gun? Perfect. With a good desiccant, of course. What's important to note here is that we are nine minutes and some odd seconds into this test and we have yet to register on the yellow tube. That is incredible results, my friends. We are flowing at five liters a minute and it's almost a full 10 minute cycle and we're barely registering on this measurement for moisture in the airflow. So if you wanna know if molecular sieves work, here's your proof. They work incredibly well. The young hang results. Oh boy, this is interesting. This unit, the wrong way actually failed to make breathable air. In fact, it made quite poisonous air. The test results showed elevated levels of carbon monoxide in the air sample. Some of you might be thinking, well, the guy taking the samples had his dang tractor running in the shop. Nope, all samples were taken from the same ambient air. Where is the smoking gun you ask? Right here in the test report, the oxygen levels were abnormally low. Now, where could that O2 have gotten to? I wonder. You guessed it, loyal and astute viewers. 
The young hang used that O2 to make its own carbon monoxide. This is the combustion event many of you have been attributing to the carbon buildup on the high pressure piston. Just to clarify here, folks, we have two test results indicating this discrepancy where we see carbon monoxide and where we see missing oxygen. And I believe the reason for that is one sample is taken from a bottle, which did go all the way up to full pressure, 4,500 PSI. The other sample was taken directly off the compressor and it was just running flat out. It just, it was not building that pressure up. So I don't think it had enough pressure to generate the carbon monoxide event, but the other one does show the missing oxygen. It's the ISO 46 hydraulic oil dieseling in the high pressure chamber. chamber. Caught red-handed. I think I can safely say that many of you that have been evangelizing about ISO 46 not being an appropriate lubricant in these units now have actual data to support your claim. Congratulations. Well done. There seem to be two oils that have many have migrated to royal purple or some other type of generic synthetic oil or a diester base oil also a synthetic like seco lube 500. the manufacturers or marketers of seco lube would not provide a data sheet so that i could evaluate the product as delivered for comparison to other lubricants what i did find was that many of the manufacturers of the base diester oil only recommend products containing their base oil for breathable air when very high quality filtration was used and tested. Apparently, thinking this stuff is okay for breathable air because it is sold for that purpose is a pretty serious mistake if you fail to dig deep enough. Using it for PCP air guns, probably a-okay. Diester based lubricants actually last a really long time and many users have indicated that the stink that comes from running ISO 46 went away completely. Probably a very good idea to completely clean your compressor before changing over as oil compatibility and contamination can lead to serious problems down the road. I'll be changing my unit over to Seco Lube 500 and I'll let you know how it goes. The Young Hang results also show remarkably dry air. So if you've ever wondered if the molecular sieve based filters remove water from the airstream, the answer, you bet. And they do it quite well. The Young Hang I'm currently using is a basic model without the oil and water separation block. I will be adding the coalescer before the filter element to extend the life of my media. As far as particulate, both units tested very well, as we should expect. I was impressed with the lack of oil mist from the Young Hang. I really thought that value would have been much higher. Now we all know. Remember friends, as these units age and get serviced over time, the output quality of the air can change quickly. Companies like Trace Analytics work hard to protect those that rely on air supplies for human use. The science is real. Trace is real. Thanks for watching and please enjoy one of my other videos on the trusty GX CS2 and be sure to fit, visit Target Forge for parts supplied right here in the USA for your GX compressors. We also just added a membership to our YouTube channel so you can help make this sort of content a reality easily. Check it out. Be a light in the darkness, friends. Have an awesome week.